بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم الحمد لله الذي أرسل رياح بشرا بين يديه ورحمته اللهم صلي وسلم على رسول الكريم اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى Today I have a very important topic to discuss inshallah so, bear with me, and uh, I have to share with you an advice written by Jalaluddin Rumi Rahmatullah Alayhi, Mawlana Jalaluddin Rumi Rahmatullah Alayhi. His real name was Muhammad, and Muhammad Jalaluddin Rumi, he was in Kunya. In the city of the Kunya and the area around it is from where the Ottoman Empire started. Before Jalaluddin Rumi, alayhi, there was another great scholar, Muhyuddin Arabi, who was amongst the teachers of Ardughal. Ardughal, you can say, was the grandfather of the Ottoman Empire. Ardughal had three sons. The youngest son was Uthman. Uthman is why the Ottoman Empire was also called Khilafatul Uthmania, because the Khilafah of Uthman, the Khilafah of the Ottoman Empire, uh, the Khilafatul Uthmania spread in the Muslim world by his, uh, you can say, his hard work. And so, in Kunya was first Ibn al Arabi, who was the teacher of Ardugal. And then the, uh, his son Uthman, by that time Jalaluddin Rumi was in Kunya and Ard, uh, Uthman, his son, was around this area. And the Muslim Empire had been shattered. The Baghdad, the Khilafah, had been completely destroyed. Completely destroyed. <coughs> Muslims had made, you can say, treaties. So now Muslims are in fragments, a group of Muslims in Egypt, a group of Muslims in Syria, and then they're divided into different groups. Iraq is destroyed. You know, Muslim world is in shambles, just like it is today. And so the Muslim world was in shambles, and Jalaluddin Rumi comes, you know, is, is, is in Kunya, and he has these possible leaders of the Muslim world. And so he's interacting with them. That perhaps by my hard work and my advice and my du'as and my sincerity and by the will of Allah, Islam will rise again. And so Jalaluddin Rumi, he pours, you know, when you water plants, where do you water them? You water them on the leaves? No. I have heard a plant can die if you water it on the leaves. Do you water it on the bark or on the stem? No, you water it in the roots. And from the roots, the water goes to the whole plant. So Jalaluddin Rumi, alayhi, being a mufassir of the Qur'an, being a teacher of the Qur'an, being a teacher of the essence of the Qur'an, he would try to impart the teachings of Qur'an to the new Muslim leadership. To the new Muslim leadership from which the Ottoman Empire was going to come. And so, it is his advice on how to, how, what the Muslims need to do at this time where the Ummah is shattered and there is no leadership. How do you create proper leadership? How do you water this plant to become a great empire? This is the topic I want to talk about with this historical background and keeping in mind what's happening in the Muslim world today. Because what is happening in the Muslim world today is who are the Muslim scholars around the Muslim leaders? They're the scholars for dollars. And the Muslim leaders are not hearing from the true scholars. They're not getting advice from those that would like to put the water on the roots of the plant. So it can great, grow into a great empire. But rather, those yes sir, oh yes sir, oh yes sir, oh yes sir. 
whatever you want, sir. Yes, I can give you the fatwa you want. Oh, you want me to speak against uh, Muslims creating fitna about Gaza, like the way Sudais did? Okay, I'll do that, no problem. So, what does Jalaluddin Rumi, rahmatullah what does he say? With his great insight and his wise words, let's take a look at what he wrote in his book. Fihi, fihi ma, fiha ma fi, fiha ma fi, which means in it is what is in it. But the intent is, it is what it is. It is what it is. This is, this is, you can say, Jalaluddin Rumi telling the Muslim scholars, listen to me, Muslim scholars, he's telling them, you have a responsibility to interact with these leaders. Because if you don't, if the good Muslim scholars don't interact with the leaders at this time, at this critical time, then the whole train will go in the wrong direction. You need to interact with them properly. You need to interact with them, not taking anything from them. You need to give them good advice because we are at a very, and he writes these exact words, we are in a very dangerous situation in the Muslim Ummah right now. We need to guide these leaders. We need to interact with these leaders. So I will tell you in what shape perhaps we should start thinking as Muslim scholars and Muslim people, how we can do what Jalaluddin uh, Rumi rahmatullahi said in the context of today. Okay, having said that now, let us look at what he has written. So Jalaluddin Rumi rahmatullahi in his book, uh, this is Kitabul Fihi Ma Fi, in it is what is in it. And in this uh, book, he starts off by quoting a saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this is you can say his tafsir of the Quran the book uh, in which he does tafsir everybody knows Jalaluddin Rumi Rahmatullah for his Mathnawi in which he did great poetry on the love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and its different forms and its different shapes and how the humans experience it and so on and so forth but Faslul Awwal in the first chapter uh, he t he says now i'm going to read from here qala an nabiyyu sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is possible that we have lost some sayings of the prophet because after the fa fall of baghdad or during the fall of baghdad many islamic books were destroyed anyway he quotes a saying of the prophet in our books that we have today we have similar statements but not exactly this statement the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sharrul Ulama'u Man Zara Umara. The worst of the scholars are those who visit the leaders, the Umara. Wa khayrul Umara'u Man Zara Ulama. And the best of the leaders are those who meet the scholars. And so somebody needs to advise our Muslim leaders that you need to seek out good scholars, not the scholars for dollars that say yes to you over everything. You need to seek out the true scholars and spend time with them. Ask them questions. Let them pour water on the roots of the tree. And the Prophet said, Sallallahu And the best Amir is the one who is at the door of the Faqir, of the poor. And the worst poor or the worst faqir, you can say the worst uh, faqir, could here mean refer to the scholars, but the bi'as al-faqir ala bab al-amir. And the worst faqir is the one who is at the door of the leader. فَهُمُ النَّاثِ ظَاهِرٌ عَلَى هَذَا الْقَوْلِ عَلَى أَنَّهُ لَا يَنْبَغِي لِعَالِمْ أَنْ يَذُورُ الْأَمِيرِ لِكَيْ لَا يَكُونَ مِنْ شِرَارِ الْعُلَمَاءِ He says, amongst the people, there are those people who take the zahir meaning, meaning the apparent meaning of the statement of the Prophet, that that perhaps it is important for scholars not to meet the, the leaders, because then they would become the worst of the leaders. وَلَيْسَ الْمَعْنَى هَذَا الْقَوْلِ كَمَا ظَنُّوا The meaning of this statement, the Prophet, is not what you think. بَلْ مَعْنَهُ أَنَّ شَرَّ عُلَمَاءُ أَنْ يَحْصِلَ إِلَى مَدَدِ مِنَ الْأُمَرَاءُ the real meaning of this saying of the Prophet 
is that the worst scholars are those who try to get help from the uh, leaders, okay? And they want to fix their condition, okay? And they, uh, or, khawfam minhum, or from the fear of them. And so he says, the real meaning, and I won't read the Arabic uh, because it's going to take more time this way, but he says that visiting the one, he says this, he says to understand this saying of the Prophet, something very interesting, he says, the one who is visiting is the one who is benefiting. And the one who is visited is the one who is giving. So if you go to this, to this, to the Muslim leader, then, and you are the one that is giving, then in fact it is like he has come to visit you. And so who is benefiting from who is the real point of the saying of the Prophet ﷺ? And he is telling us that it is important and vital at this time in the Ummah, where the Ummah is shattered, that the scholars must spend time and clean the minds and the doubts of the Muslim leaders. So then he says, continuing, I want to show you a specific part, what he says. He says, مَثَلُ هَذَا الْآلَمِ إِذَا ذَارُ الْأَمِيرِ يَكُونُ فِي سُورُ الْمَزُورِ The example of that good scholar, when he goes to meet the leaders, is like the one who is being visited. وَيَكُونُ أَمِيرٌ فِي سُورَةُ الزَّائِرِ And it is the leader who is like as if he's visiting him. Why? لِأَنَّهُ فِي أَحْوَالِ الْجَمِيعِ أَنْ يَكُونُ أَمِيرًا أَخَذَ مِنْهُمْ مُسْتَعِدًا لِلْعَوْنِ Because it is the Amir, the leader, the Muslim leader who is taking benefit from him. وَهَذَا الْعَالِمُ مُسْتَغْنًا مِنَ الْعَنِ الْأَمِيرِ And this scholar, he is free from the need of the Amir. He doesn't need him. In Nauka Shams, he's like the sun who is benefiting the whole world by visiting this leader of the Muslims, trying to help the leader of the Muslims. And he gives an example of this, and then let's continue. And then he quotes a statement or a proverb, نَحْنُ تَعَلَّمْنَا أَن نُؤْتِي We studied so we can give مَا تَعَلَّمْنَا أَن نَعْخُذ We didn't study to take, we studied to give. And so, what does he then say? And so even before I continue, because now is the part that I wanted to share, even if there are Muslim, scholar, Muslim leaders, political leaders, who want to do good for Islam, they don't know how. And they will end up doing what these leaders were doing, which Jalaluddin Rumi is warning them from. And so let me read to you a part of what he says. قَالَ الْمَوْلَانَ فِي تَفْسِيرِ مَا سَبَقْ And in regards to the tafsir of the ayah before, that was being discussed in a few pages before, إِنِّي قُلْتُ هَذَا لِلْأَمِيرِ He said, I said this to the leader, to the Amir. Okay? وَهُوَ أَنْتَ فِي أَوَّلِ الْأَمْرِ بُرِّزَتْ بَطْلًا لِلْإِسْلَامِ You want to come out as the hero of Islam? And then he says that uh, you want to come as a leader of Islam, but you want to use your own, own aql, bi aqli wa tadbiri wa bi ra'i min ahli al-biqa al-Islam, li ajli baqa al-Islam. You want to use your own aql for the baqa of Islam, for the for the this the security of Islam, wa kathratul ahli al-Islam. You want to use your own opinion. You want to f work within the paradigm that the world taught you? Right? And then he says, وَلَكِنْ إِنْدَمَا اِعْتَمَدَتْ عَلَىٰ رَأْيِكْ لَمْ تَرَاحَكْ When as long as you're using your own opinion, you won't see the truth. In fact, you're going to see the opposite things happen. You're going to work towards what you think is good for the Muslims and you're going to see opposite results. Why? And then he says, 
جعال الحق تعالى ذلك سبب سعي نفسه سببا لنقص الإسلام because Allah has made what you have done as a as a causing of harm to Islam you think you're helping Islam but you're causing harm قد حلف تتار you have made agreements with the Tatar so you made agreements with Tatar they won't fight you but then the Tatars are now are in agreement with you and they're fighting other Muslims okay وقدمت وقدمت لهم العون you have put forward for them help uh, uh, so that the people of Sham and the people of Misr تحاربوا دولة الإسلام so that they will fight the people of Islam so he says how can this be and this is what is happening to a great part today that every country every Muslim leader Every Muslim political leader is worried about his own seat, his own chair, his own country, his own little territory, and and is not worried about what's happening in the, in the territory. And he thinks he's doing good. Maybe I'm doing good for Islam. You know, I'm going to try to do good for Islam. I'm going to do good for Islam by showing how progressive Islam is, because that's the conversation. The narrative is built in to the system that everybody belongs to, and everybody is forced to talk about what they want. And responding to the narrative. So even if a Muslim leader wants to do good, he doesn't know how to get out of it. And then for today, how can any Muslim leader, how, how, how can any Muslim leader guide Muslims without knowing the prophecies of, of the Prophet wasallam? How can a Muslim leader be a guide to the Muslim world? to any degree, without knowing the sayings of the Prophet regarding Islamic eschatology. He cannot, he cannot, he cannot. To guide the Muslims, you have to know Islamic eschatology, that what's happening in the world according to the, to the Quranic and the prophetic vision. And only then he can help the other Muslim, Muslims. Otherwise, you're going to think I'm helping the Muslims by increasing education, by increasing energy, and by following what the United Nations says, and following the UN Charter. And so, they're all cowards, and even if they try, everything backfires because nothing can be done. So, you need so Muslim scholars, true Muslim scholars, true Muslim scholars, need to find a way to engage Muslim leaders. I don't know why ISNA and ICNA and other Islamic institutions have not tried to engage Muslim leadership directly. Muslims in the West, Muslims in the West need to find a way to directly engage the leadership of the Muslims across the Muslim world and teach the Muslim leaders about Islamic eschatology, about and water the roots, take them out of dunya. Take them out of this worldly framework that they're in. After all, they probably became political leaders seeking power and fame and money. And so they have that. But how do you, you have to take them out? To take them out, they need to sit with the scholars who, who will be able to guide them. And so Muslim scholars, when in this time where Muslim leadership, the Muslim, the Muslim political leadership is incomplete. Complete shambles, complete shambles, complete shambles. Even here in America, now we're in complete shambles because if we vote for Trump, we're wrong. And if we vote for Biden, we're wrong. So what to do? Who's going to tell you the answers to those questions other than a Muslim scholar who understands the times that we're in according to the sayings of the Prophet? Other than a scholar who will tell you what Islamic eschatology is telling the Muslims to do. So, <clears throat> just like when that nascent baby tribal society that was going to become the great empire, Jalaluddin Rumi alayhi, was in Kunya trying to engage the leadership, trying to get them out of dunya, and trying to get them out of the love of dunya for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And so when he was trying to do this, he succeeded because he was engaging the right people. Muslims are not engaging, the Muslim scholars are not engaging the, the right people all the time. You can, you know the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ on the very famous saying of the Prophet, Ad-Dinu Nasiha. Right? Deen is advice. So what did the Prophet say ﷺ? The Prophet said ﷺ, Ad-Dinu Nasiha, the deen, not religion, that's a bad translation, Islam, okay, is Nasiha, sincere advice. And then the Prophet was asked, Liman, to whom? O Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, to Allah, sincerity to Allah, his book, his messenger, and to the Aimmatul Muslimin, the leaders of the Muslims, somebody has to give good advice, good advice, not Sudesi advice, not scholars of dollars advice, good advice to the Muslim leadership. You think MBS knows what he's doing? He's just falling into the quicksand of dunya. So, sincerity to Allah in his book and his messenger, sincerity to the leader of the Muslims, give them sincere advice. Give them sincere advice. And then, to the common Muslims. So the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, الدِّينُ النَّسِيحَةُ قُلْنَا لِمَنْ And we said, O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for whom? قَالَ لِلَّهِ وَكِتَابِهِ وَرُسُولِهِ وَعِمَّةُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وعامتهم. And sincere advice or sincereness to who? To Allah and His Book and His Messenger and to the leader of the Muslims because they can make the change. And then to the common folk. You see, whom did the prophets go to? They went to the leadership. Go to Fir'aun, he's rebelled. And say what to him? Say to him a soft word, give him good advice. And then perhaps in another place, in the Naziat, Allah says, say to him, hear something so you may have fear of Allah. And so Muslim scholars need to do what Jalaluddin Rumi Rahmatullah did when the Muslim world was in shambles and fighting against one another and having treaties with the enemies of Islam, thinking they're helping Islam. And what does Jalaluddin Rumi Rahmatullah say? He says, it is time for Muslims to not stay away from the door of the leaders. It is now time to visit the leaders and give them good advice. Become like a source of sun for them. Perhaps Allah, if you're because of your sincerity of meeting them, Allah will change their hearts. And so, it is extremely important, extremely important that at this time, in this critical time, if we can, if the Muslims can, whoever is wherever, whoever is at whatever position, they should use that position to reach out. The Muslims in the West especially have a responsibility to reach out to the Muslims in the leadership in the other parts of the world and give them good advice and then express. This is what Jalaluddin Rumi Rahmatullah did in his book, Fihi Ma Fi. And it is what is in it or it is what it is. He said, this is the advice I gave them. And he would put it on record. Because now that it is on record, now they are even more compelled to do what the advice was. And the same thing was done by the great scholar Dr. Isra Ahmed. He would meet the leaders of Pakistan in particular and tell them establish the laws of Allah in Pakistan. Stop being friends and listening to whatever America is saying so on and so forth. He would give them this advice and he would say it in his lectures what happened in those corridors of power. And so this became a hujja against them on the Day of Judgment. So Muslims need to find a way to implement the saying of the Prophet of giving sincere advice, keeping in mind the times that we live in, what? How can we tell the Muslim leadership of the the oncoming doom? 
that the whole world is about to face and what they need to do. How can they, how can, how can they, how can, you know, how can the Muslim leadership be told about the pending doom that we're about to sh face and what to do? And how can we start this conversation? How is going to advise them? Somebody needs to advise them. This is the time. <coughs> so I say this in the month of Ramadan by the by hoping from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I have learned something from Jalaluddin Rumi rahmatullah alayhi and I'm conveying it to you that perhaps there is somebody who can do something to reach to the Muslim scholarship in different areas of the Muslim world where we can tell the Muslim world about the pending doom that is about to befall the Ummah and perhaps, perhaps a few of these idiots will listen. Perhaps a few of these idiots will listen. Perhaps one of these idiots will listen. And Allah knows best. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'il muslimina wal muslimat.